Dolphins Today is presented by Aura, a all-in-one digital safety tool. If you go to Aura.com slash Sports, that's where you can begin your 14-day free trial. I am Will Scott. Welcome into Dolphins Today. We are still reacting to that amazing game that we witnessed on Saturday night. The Dolphins winning their preseason opener 26-24 to over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We saw that field goal hit the upright. It literally came down to the final play, but the Dolphins were victorious in Tampa. They're 1-0 in the preseason. So welcome into our first Overreaction Monday video. We're going to be doing these every single Monday the entire season. We're going to get into some things that we've been seeing on Twitter, some things that we saw during the game on Saturday night. And we're going to tell you if it's an overreaction or if it's accurate. But first, go down and like this video if you enjoyed our watch party. We had over 22,000 people join us on Saturday night. Me and producer Patrick Seatman had a lot of fun with you guys. We're going to be having watch parties every single game this season, including Saturday night when the Dolphins take on the Las Vegas Raiders. Like this video if you enjoyed our watch party. Let's get into our first thing here. Is Teddy Bridgewater's job as the backup quarterback in trouble after Skylar Thompson had, like, the best preseason debut ever? This is an overreaction. They pay Teddy Bridgewater a lot of money, $6.5 million guaranteed, to be the backup quarterback. And he was the starter the last year, uh, last couple years uh, with the teams he was with, 2020 in Carolina. Last season in Denver, he's one of the better backup quarterbacks in the league. So, no, his job right now is not in jeopardy. Now, we did not know until yesterday why he didn't play. I was very surprised that he did not play at all on Saturday night. Skyler played the entire game. And, you know, normally in the preseason, the backup quarterback, especially a second-string quarterback, is going to play a lot. We did not see Teddy on the field, but Mike McDaniel updated us uh, yesterday saying that the reason that Teddy did not play was because of back tightness so we now know the reason for that meanwhile Skylar Thompson went off so Teddy Bridgewater was on the sidelines along with Tua Tungavailoa watching Skylar Thompson uh, produce uh, an amazing game I think he really exceeded the high expectations we already had for him so there's also some Dolphins fans saying that man maybe we should trade Teddy Bridgewater maybe Cleveland if Deshaun gets suspended the entire season would be interested in trading for Teddy since he is one of the better backups in the league Look, if Deshaun gets suspended, uh, Jimmy G is going to be the first call for Cleveland, right? Now, if Jimmy G is already on another team when that Deshaun decision comes, which I highly doubt it, then maybe Teddy would be on their radar. But Teddy Bridgewater is not going to get traded anytime soon because I mentioned he just signed a one-year, $6.5 million, fully guaranteed deal with the Dolphins. So a seventh-round pick is not going to come in and take his backup job at least right away. We can't overreact to it. It's just been one preseason game, but Skyler did look phenomenal. Here's what Teddy did last season in Denver. He was the starting quarterback the entire season. Decent numbers, but he's a better backup than he is a starter. I think we can all agree on that. I think it's more likely that he gets dealt during the season. Let's say a starter on a playoff contender goes down and Teddy's right in the bench in Miami and two is playing great and Skyler played great the entire preseason then yes, I think at that point the team would feel comfortable trading Teddy Bridgewater. Would you trade Teddy Bridgewater? Type T for trade or type P for pass down in the comment section. Go down, let me know. It is the pinned comment on today's video. When an ad break comes, go down, chime in. Would you, would you trade Teddy Bridgewater? Let's get into our next story here. Could the Dolphins carry three quarterbacks? And in, in my initial roster projection video... I said that the Dolphins would just carry two quarterbacks, Tua Tungavailoa and Teddy Bridgewater, but now I think they might carry three because Skylar Thompson was outstanding. So this makes the roster bubble even more interesting. Skylar Thompson now has a very good chance of making this football team. And look, a couple of y'all were in the comments uh, the other day, especially during the watch party, saying, Will, I remember the grade that you gave Skylar Thompson. You did not like that pick initially. I have a confession to make. I was wrong about Skylar Thompson. I was dead wrong about Skylar Thompson. I gave that draft pick an F. I did not think the Dolphins should have been drafting a quarterback. I wanted offensive linemen. I'm like, why are they taking this guy from Kansas State? But my goodness, 
I was wrong about Skylar Thompson. This guy is the real deal. He was remarkable. He did not look like a rookie. Mike McDaniel said the same thing yesterday. He did not look like a rookie. He came out here and looked like a seasoned vet going off in his NFL debut. Here is what he did against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And yes, I understand it was their second and third string defense most of the game. But still, this is one of the better defenses in the league. 218 yards, a touchdown, completed 20 of 28 passes, including 15 of his first 18. It is wild that he was asked to play the entire game, right? Teddy had the back tightness, too, was not going to play. I think the Zach Wilson scare kind of contributed to Tua Tungavailoa not playing. But that is extremely rare for a seventh-round quarterback to play the entire first preseason game. Not only did he play the entire game, he played very, very well. Mike McDaniel recognizing that, saying, I have to check myself when certain things will happen during a game or practice where I'll feel myself getting impatient with him because I've completely forgotten he's a rookie. But he's a rookie, and to his credit, we rely on him as a veteran. It's a hard thing in this league with a night's sleep to go in as a starter. We were pumped to give him that opportunity. I know he feels like, and we'll all feel like, he left some plays out there. But the biggest thing is we didn't have any turnovers as an offense. And that's what we heard about Skyler in camp as well, that he's very consistent. He does not turn the ball over. You like to hear that because he's a rookie quarterback. That's sometimes the concern with rookies. Now, should Thompson make the team? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Should he be on the initial 53-man roster? Go down in the comment section and chime in. Keep in mind, if they try to stash him on the practice squad, he might get snatched up. Think Reed Sinnott from last year. Let me tell you about our good friends over at Aura because they are keeping your family safe online from hackers. They offer family plans to protect up to five people. And look, in today's world where all of our purchases pretty much are made online, it's very important to stay safe online. Aura is going to make sure you stay safe. You can pick up your 14-day free trial at Aura.com slash chat sports. That link is going to be in the comments and the description of this video. Go down, take advantage of that great deal we're giving you here at Chat Sports. Look, you cannot risk this guy getting snatched up, right? You cannot risk the possibility that another team is going to get Skylar Thompson if you try to be cute and try to maybe wave him and then put him on the practice squad. And I just mentioned Reed Sennett. The Palm Beach Post said the same thing. Thompson looked good. Too good, perhaps which is why each time Thompson waved his arms to direct receivers exactly where he wanted them to line up, each time he dropped back to pass with the grace of a veteran, and each time he delivered the ball where it needed to go, you couldn't help but think Reed Sinnott. Sinnott, you'll recall, is the quarterback who looked good in Dolphins training camp a year ago, including a 343-yard preseason game. Then the Dolphins got a little too cute, trying to sneak Senate through waivers and onto the practice squad when they felt the need to activate receiver Isaiah Ford and backup center Cameron Tom. That explains why Senate is performing well in Eagles green right now. Great point made there by the Palm Beach Post. Let's talk about Michael Dieter because Michael Dieter looked very, very good on Saturday. And keep in mind, he was the starting center last year, but he has since been benched for some odd reason for Connor Williams, who has no experience at the center position. So could Michael Dieter win his job back? Yes, this is absolutely something that can happen and should happen. Connor Williams did not even play it all on Saturday, surprisingly. Meanwhile, Dieter had very, very clean snaps. And trust me, I was watching. I was watching every single snap that came in on Saturday, and Dieter looked very, very good. Meanwhile, Williams uh, has all these high shotgun, snap, hot shotgun snaps at training camp. He's been a train wreck moving to the center position. This should be an easy decision for Mike McDaniel and this coaching staff. Dieter is clearly the best option at center, and if you put him back as the starting center, you can slide Connor Williams back to his natural position of left guard, where he was one of the best guards in the league with the Dallas Cowboys, ranked 11th amongst all guards on PFF last season. This is your best offensive line that you can put together right now with this current roster. Dieter should be the starting center. Let's talk about the run game. A lot of people are freaking out about the run game, that it's a problem because it was not impressive on Saturday night. This is an overreaction. Uh, the run game is going to be just fine. You're talking about a guy in Mike McDaniel that is a genius when it comes to running the football. And the starters, the two, the two main guys didn't even play on Saturday. We'll get to those guys in a second. 
Here is what the Dolphins did against the Bucs running the football. So Gaskin had the best game, four carries, 27 yards. Nobody else had more than two carries. That is something to keep in mind. King of Finland said this, if you take out Miles Gaskin's 20-yard run, the Dolphins' running backs had 10 carries for four yards rushing last night, averaging 0.4 yards per carry. Even if you remove the negative five-yard run by Zaquandre White as well, they still had seven yards on nine carries for 0.77 yards per carry. That is no bueno. Yes, that is no bueno, but keep in mind that Chase Edmonds and Raheem Mostert, the top two running backs on this team, did not even play, so we did not see them. And we're looking at a limited sample size here. The Dolphins' running backs only combined for 11 carries, so we can't really judge them based on that. Nobody outside of Miles Gaskin had more than two carries. Limited sample size. The two Bain guys didn't even play. No reason to freak out. Now, if you're a Dolphins fan, you have come to the right place. You need to subscribe because we're giving you Dolphins news, Dolphins rumors, watch parties, post-game shows, and more. And look, the Dolphins, we're going to get to this in a second, but they've worked out two guys today. If they sign somebody, you know what we do. We get you guys a video. And Byron Jones was placed on the pup list. I got you guys a video from the golf course. We're, a bit, we're built different here at Chat Sports. So if you're a Dolphins fan, go down, hit that big red subscribe button. Let's talk about Jason Sanders. Is he back after a disappointing season last year? Yes, Jason Sanders is back. He's going to get back to being a top-notch kicker in the NFL. He was fantastic last night. Look, he's coming off of a career, or a Saturday night. He's coming off a career worst, 74% field goal percentage in 2021, just two of six from 50-plus yards last year. But he was two of two from 50-plus yards last night, made a 52-yarder, made a 53-yarder, four for four on field goals, two for two on extra points. He was one of the MVPs of this game. You normally don't say that about a kicker, but he was fantastic on Saturday night. Good to see that from Jason Sanders. Is Tanner Conner going to make this football team? Uh, Tanner Conner is someone who I'm very, very high on. Since the draft process, I said the Dolphins should take him in the seventh round. They signed him as a UDFA. He looked very, very good on Saturday. Is he going to make the team? This is an overreaction. He's the sixth tight end. This is going to be an uphill battle for Connor. I would love to see him make this team. However, I do not know if he will because he's the sixth tight end right now. Now, he's low-key the fifth because Adam Shaheen tried to get <laughs> – they tried to trade Adam Shaheen. He's back. So, we're not even going to count Adam Shaheen on this uh, depth chart anymore. But Tanner Connor tied for the team lead with three receptions on Saturday, caught all three of his targets for 25 yards. Now, I'm not saying he doesn't have a shot. He's got a shot to make this football team. But judging one game and saying, yes, he's going to make this football team just his first game – I don't think so. He's definitely going to survive the next batch of roster cuts, but I don't think uh, right now he is a projected guy to make the team. And we'll get you my final roster projection video here before the 53-man deadline. He's got a shot, but I think it's an overreaction to just say after this one game he's going to make the team. Let me ask you, will, Con will Tanner Connor make the team? Type M for make or type W for won't down in the comment section. Go down, chime in. Is Tanner Connor going to make this football team? Let's focus on Preston Williams now. Is he on his way out? Someone that the Dolphins have discussed a trade for, excuse me, a trade with? Yeah, this is accurate. I think Preston Williams is going to be gone uh, sooner rather than later. Of course, he tweeted two weeks ago that he wants opportunities. He even took a shot at Mike McDaniel the next day in his press conference. Albert Breer reported last week that the Dolphins might trade him and might trade Lynn Bowden Jr., he had zero targets on Saturday. Not just zero receptions, zero targets. Only contributions were on two punt returns. Kind of a bold prediction here. Maybe not so bold, depending on how you look at it. Preston Williams is going to get traded this week. Preston Williams will get dealt this week. There are teams in need of wide receivers. There's some injuries happening. The Chicago Bears desperately need some receiver help. Would not be surprised to see Preston get dealt this week. I think a trade happens sooner rather than later. Does Noah Igbenogany suck? Yes, <laughs> this is not an overreaction. Noah Igbenogany is not good at playing football, and it's unfortunate because he was showing signs of improvement earlier in the offseason, but he has looked terrible in training camp. He looked terrible in the joint practices, and he did not look good on Saturday night. After a rough week of joint practices where he was getting burned by Jalen Darden like every single play, he gave up a first-quarter touchdown to Darden. And let me reenact this because Igbo is like way over here. 
Darden was way over here. Easy touchdown. I have no idea how in the span of a few seconds Darden created that much open space. But Noah Benogany, man, is not a good football player. And a lot of people were saying on Saturday during our watch party that maybe he's going to get cut. Maybe he's not going to make the team. But here's why he's going to make the team, because he has a $4.5 million dead cap hit. So, you know, former first-round pick, the dead cap's going to be pretty high. And now Trill Williams is out. So that is something to keep in mind uh, that Trill Williams is out. Now, they did work out two corners today. Raleigh Texada, undrafted free agent out of Baylor, and McKenzie Alexander, a six-year vet. I would much rather sign Alexander. I mean, I don't know much about Texada. Alexander was a decent player Back in his days in Minnesota, he's a six-year vet. So, Trey Williams, again, out for the season with a torn ACL. They're probably going to bring in another corner here in the next few days. Now, just a reminder that we're live every Thursday here on the channel for a live watch. Uh, we do Well, we do our live watch parties for games, but we're also live here for our live show, 4 o'clock Eastern time, 1 o'clock Pacific time. Go down, turn on your notifications so you know when we're live. Eric Ezukanma was a guy that was very much hyped up going into this preseason game, and it was a little bit of an underwhelming performance, just two receptions. Is he overhyped? This is an overreaction. Just one game. It was his first preseason game. He was not really targeted at all in the first three quarters. Caught two passes for 18 yards in what was a pretty underwhelming performance. I said before the game I thought Easy e was going to go off. And it just did not happen. Uh, two passes for 18 yards on Saturday. Um, both of those catches, by the way, were in the fourth quarter. So he, we really didn't see him uh, before the fourth quarter. But just one game. He's going to get more involved as the season goes on, even as the preseason goes on. I'm not worried at all. He's going to be a heck of a player. He's looked outstanding in training camp. Type Easy e if you are excited about Eric Ezukan. I want to see Easy e spammed down in the comments section. Go down there, type easy e Thanks for watching this edition of Dolphins Today. This has been Will Scott. Talk to you again soon. Again, the Dolphins worked out to Exod and Alexander today. We'll let you know if they sign one of those guys.